This is Al Fix It, and this is a video to follow up, hopefully my last video. Uh, I'm in the minivan camper, turned into a minivan camp, turned into a camper, a stealth camper, and the first trip in it was to Yosemite National Park, so I wanted to tell you guys about it and how to do it the way I did it if you want to. And uh, so I'm going to tell you all about uh, how I did it. Uh, first of all, this book right here is really neat. This thing is worth getting. Pick it up at uh, RV supply stores and stuff like that, you know, and it tells you where those camping places are, what they have in them, if they have showers or not, and where they're at. Gives you directions. It's really cool. This also is really a great thing to have. And I, I, you know, you don't have to have these things. They're just really good. They're really nice. These other things here are just maps and stuff that I picked up along the way. Here's a visitor's guide, 2017. Here is a KOA campground directory. And you get them free at the RV parks. When you go into Yosemite National Park, you're gonna, they're going to give you these things. And there's a nice map on here of the park. But uh, here's another thing is don't rely on your phone and navigation stuff, electronics. Because you go up into these areas and you're not going to get any cell phone or navigation, GPS, or all that stuff could drop out really fast. You need to have some paper to look at. So, uh... Dispersed camping. I wanted to say, if you go to uh, National Forest uh, Visitor Center, you can get one of these, and it's a really cool guide for if you want to do dispersed camping, you're not going to go into RV parks or anything. You can just pull over in National Forest Land or BLM, and it's legal to just pull over and sleep or camp or whatever, as long as you just follow a couple simple rules that they have for you. They'll tell you at the visitor center and they give you one of these maps. And that's very useful. And it's very detailed with little roads, what kind of roads you can drive on, what kind you need four-wheel drive to get on. Um, that's a good thing to have if you're going to do that. I did this whole trip uh, using RV parks mostly and little campgrounds. And there's a national forest campgrounds. So let's see. Just uh, using the free maps... That I picked up along the way. I'll show you the specific route that I went and why it was really cool here in the middle of July. It's an excellent time to go see Yosemite National Park. One reason is the whole top half of the park, Tioga Pass, that whole section of the park, which is a lot of the park, is closed most of the year. It's open during the hottest months of the summer. So this is great. I went in the middle of July the temperature is nice up there. It cools down uh, and it, it's nice for sleeping. So, just to get to some specifics of exactly what I did from Nevada going in over there. I actually went up uh, in Nevada up towards, uh, up towards Beatty up, and I cut off at the uh, Death Valley. And I went across Death Valley into California. And then I went up California north to uh, Bishop. And at Bishop, actually, I found a really cool hot springs just out of Bishop, uh, just before Bishop, Cano Hot Springs, and uh, ended up spending the night there and uh, just enjoying the hot springs and went on in. So then I went up to uh, Mono Lake up at the top and then cut over from Mono Lake into the Yosemite National Park. But just before you get into the National Park, there's a section of road here uh, just before the entrance, and there's about at least a half a dozen really cool, uh, it's a national forest land park, uh, par, uh, camping places, and they're like uh, $14 a night. They're right on, I think it's the Merced River, or some river, and they, you know, you get a picnic table, a fire uh, ring, and uh, 
a nice place to pitch a tent or park your van or whatever. And there's bear boxes, of course. You have to use your bear boxes, which is where you put all your food and, and trash and stuff so that the bears aren't attracted to your camp. And then you come in from Tioga Pass right into the park, and that's just a beautiful drive. Now, even in the middle of July, the hot uh, summer, there's snow there. People are camping in the snow up there in that end of the park. So you can imagine most of the year that, that this is all closed. So come on down through that park, and there's neat places to stop and look and view, and there's camping. There's, oh, by the way, all the camping places in the park, just forget it. You might be six months or a year out trying to sign up for one of those. Uh, I just, I just, I'm not up to that. I can't plan that far ahead. So I just forget about trying to camp inside that park. Outside the park? Yeah, you can do it. So coming down through that park, there's uh, all these places you can stop and go on hikes. There's little lakes. Um, there's really cool things in there. And it's, it takes a long time to go from Tioga Pass all the way across that park and down in here where you can go into the Yosemite Valley. Yosemite Valley is where everything's happening with tourists and it's crowded. There's people everywhere and you best to park somewhere and get on a shuttle and ride that shuttle around. And this guide that they give you at the, you know, tells you all about the shuttle routes and all the cool places to go. You know what? It's easier just to get on that shuttle and you'll see all these uh, tourists. They've been looking and studying this thing and just follow the when they when the bus when the shuttle stops in different places you'll see one of them's like really super popular and practically everybody gets off the bus follow those people that's where it's all happening so anyway you get off and on anywhere you want all over this park uh in that valley and that's the way to do that uh do the shuttle now you can't see this whole park in a day we spent a week and we never seen, we didn't see a, this whole park. <laughs> it's so much to see. It's really cool. So what you want to do is find the entrance that's closest to the park that you can get out and go to some RV parks or someplace camping uh, outside of that park that's not always full. So the closest one, really, um, the, to Yosemite Valley where everything's happening, you want to go out like 140. 140 to El Portal, right outside the park. It's it's not too far. You know, you're, you're 20, 30 minutes, depending on traffic. And there is actually a really cool RV park that I like called Indian Flats. Now, that place will fill up. Even in the middle of the week, it, it, it will fill up. So you want to get a reservation or or when you go in in the morning, if you can go there first, uh, make reservations for the night and then go into the park spend your day and you have a place to come back to at night you go back out 140 to El Portal Indian Flats or one of the other places around there if you have to go clear down past El Portal you can go to a place called Mariposa and there's a uh, one I found in this big guide here about uh, uh, RV place to park where I, I parked one night because Indian Flats was too full. So then there, there's uh, other exits. The last exit we took was a really long exit to get out of the park because the last day we weren't going to come back. So it didn't matter. So we took the uh, 41 and went all the way down uh, through the park, Wawona, and uh, there's Mariposa Grove and we came out of the park down there and uh, we ended up in Oakhurst not too far uh, out and we found a cool RV park there and there's a bunch of other camping places around there there's RV parks and stuff because you're getting close to Bass Lake Bass Lake is real popular and there's all kinds of camping places all around there and we we camped a nice little park right on the Fresno River and uh, went swimming in the Fresno River in the morning and it's all speckled with gold uh, it's actually fool's gold and it's really interesting to uh, 
step into that river and it's all glistening and glittering with gold on the bottom in the sand and when you step in there and all that gold just uh, goes around in the water and sparkles it's kind of neat so anyways then we came out of uh, Oakhurst uh, RV Park went on into Fresno and uh, the old 99 highway to 58 and back up to uh, towards Nevada again on the 15 so that's how we did it and you can too we didn't have to stay at any hotels because we had our minivan stealth camper van and we stayed in the RV parks so like I say if you want to do dispersed camping they call it on the road you don't even have to pay for an RV park however you want to do it uh, that's the way we did it and it worked out so nice we had a great time this is Al fix it check out some film I've, I had a little bit of video I got some pictures I'm not real big on super cool equipment so I don't have the latest camera gear and all that but I just show you a few things and tell you how I do it and you can go see it for yourself alrighty